I grew up on a farm. I grew up, my parents had tomatoes. At a young age, I was very good at throwing tomatoes at my brothers. I'm um, not very good at picking them. So I went and worked at my friend's fruit farm for 10 years, peaches and nectarines. And I have a deep appreciation for agriculture broadly. I grew up half city, half country boy, which was a great mix uh, and has served me very well into the future. I live off grid now. I live one hour north of Sydney. This is my house uh, overlooking a beautiful creek that no one knows about. If Sydney knew about this, it would probably have a high rise on it and a resort. We live just in paradise. I have an EV and, and, and I'm on my own personal path of electrification. And it's an absolute pleasure. It's really cool. It's not just a hobby, it's a science and it's data driven and uh, it appeals to all my engineering side. My company is Smart Commercial Solar. We are actually now the largest commercial solar provider in Australia. So we build, own, operate, maintain, we finance. And we were actually the first company in Australia to start PPAs. That's why I called it Smart. I thought it was really cool. So we'll install a system for free and then bill for energy over time. And I'll talk a bit about that later. We've got a very close association with New South Wales Farmers Federation. And uh, I think we've been cajoled into Queensland Farmers uh, just last night over a couple of years. But what's in it for you? What's in it for me? When you're thinking about solar, you're able to think now, not just about behind the meter, but you're able to think about in front of the meter systems as well. And so I'll just explain very briefly what they are. Behind the meter, most of you are familiar with just saving energy through uh, reducing your energy bill. But for commercials, we can talk about demand management, demand reduction. We should be thinking about energy resilience, and especially those of you who are you know, in fragile parts of the network, what could be avoiding augmentation. And uh, also if you're doing something new with your business, how you can use solar and batteries to allow you to get faster grid connections. Typically with solar, we can meet between 20 to 40% of a business needs. Uh, you would have experienced this. Who has solar at home, by the way? Yeah, okay, so I'm talking to the converted. I'm gonna go now. <laughs> no. So yeah, typically for a business, anywhere up to sort of 40% just purely with solar. So how do we tackle the remaining 60%? Well, that's obviously going to come to storage. Now storage logically gets you to around about 80% or financially gets you to about 80% before we start hitting sort of hurdles. Getting rid of that last 20% purely with solar and battery can cost you, in our maths, uh, around about 100% of the original investment. So it can be quite a big hurdle. That's pretty much what's financially sensible to do right now. And that's gonna help you offset your energy bill. This is someone's load in black. The solar you can see rises through the day, feeds into the battery as the battery goes negative. Uh, and then the battery feeds into the load at night until the battery's empty. And so that cycle continues and most of you with batteries would understand that. So building out a battery to survive all days of all the year, given all load profiles, can be difficult. Demand savings are a very big part for businesses because demand is becoming increasingly expensive. Demand is the single point of time in each month where you use the most power. Now, solar, if you have a really nice daytime bias like this client here, solar can hit those demand moments. But inevitably, when we hit the demand in the middle of the day, it might be picked up at 7.30 at night where there's a new demand, maybe not as high as the formal one, but in this particular case, we save them 25% of the demand cost. With batteries, we can do a lot more. And so you can use batteries to demand manage your site as well. Now, this is really important if you are on the fringe of grid or if you have a weak network or if your business is expanding and you have to upgrade your transformer or the lines. So you could actually use a battery to supplement or avoid having to pay for an upgrade to the power system. And therefore you can have bigger demands and use a battery to offset everything above, let's say 10 megawatts or whatever the set point is. And then finally, energy resilience. How many of you get regular blackouts? Probably a few of you. And as we go towards a more renewable future, unless the grid is galvanized, fixed, we are going to have more interruptions to our power supplies. I say this as a bit of a creator of this problem and also as a potential fixer. We've kind of closed the loop so we can make money out of all the problems we've created and um, you'll be forced to buy batteries. 
But energy resilience en enables you to build in the middle of nowhere and uh, we can do that financially sensibly. On the other side, if you have a battery and solar, you can actually now face that towards the market and you can now make money on your site through trading in and out of the spot market, getting paid for FCAS and potentially network services where the network may be weak, they may pay you some money to avoid them having to fix it and demand response as well, where there's an insane demand, you can dispatch your power into the spot market to fix that problem for the retailer or the network. And this is basically what a battery can do in a market. We could tell the battery to say charge when the price goes under a certain threshold, and we can tell it to discharge when the price in the national energy market goes over a certain threshold. And it's a much more dynamic situation than this graph, but there's money to be made out of this. Now for every megawatt that you install, which is roughly a million dollars, you make about $250,000 a year out of playing in this market, as well as the FCAS market, which is um, you get paid to exist. And then there's opportunities like playing in virtual power plants. If you have multi-sites, if you have different locations, you can actually trade between your sites or between friends and create effectively a mini grid using the poles and wires, using the networks. And the earnings breakdown changes for each one of you. You'll all have different load profiles. You'll all use power in a different way and you'll be in different parts of the network. This is one particular client's what we call stack. They're making most of their money or saving most of their money through the wholesale energy market. Some of their solar is going directly to the load, uh, but they're making a good chunk of money, 11% out of FCAS and uh, peak demand reduction as well. It is complex. That's why I exist. I solve the problem of making different types of technology work together to get a financial outcome for you. And we spend a lot of time and effort because um, manufacturers often promise that they can do something that they can't. Now, how does this all work? You can either pay cash, you can enter into a lease, uh, or you can get a power purchase agreement. Most of you will be familiar. Has anyone got a PPA, power purchase agreement? So, I invented uh, this, uh, I didn't know what a PPA was, it's called Pay As You Go Solar uh, when I started the business and we are the most successful community owned fund in Australia. We have over $40 million of mum and dad's money invested in rooftops returning at least a 7% return and has been doing that for over 10 years and we have about another 50 to $60 million of institutional money invested as well. So we've done over $100 million of power purchase agreements. If you are a large user, this is the most sensible way for you to invest in solar and battery. You take none of the risk, none of the performance risk, none of the product risk. We install it for free and you simply pay for the energy that you use from the system. In effect, we've got a smart business like uh, yours or your clients. We arrange the design, supply and installation. We arrange the funder. The funder gives us the money to build the system. We build the system, we stick it on your roof or on your premises. And then uh, the system generates energy, which you, you then pay for us to operate and maintain, and we return that fund back to you. That fund is available to everyone. If you have money doing nothing and you want to make, it's sort of earning more around 8.5% now, and we do this all over the country. Got some great case studies up there. We work with hundreds of people with thousands of really cool systems. And um, yeah. That's about it from me.